Welcome back to Echo Ridge. Today, we're going to start a brand new colony with an interesting twist. And when I put the prospect of a new colony up to vote in both our Discord and over on YouTube, the results were pretty clear. Everybody wants to see more critters and more plants. You may have seen way back in the Echo Ridge Gaming Archives a series called Greenhouse. And in that series, we had an emphasis on critters and plants. Well, in that colony, I didn't go quite as far as I should have, considering those objectives. So this time, the goal is every critter and every plant. And since we're doing so many critters and plants, we're going to need a larger asteroid. We are going to be playing with the Spaced Out DLC, but we'll go with the classic asteroid style, just so we have more room for all of our wonderful farms. And where better to start a farming colony? Well, probably Verdant. Now I'm gonna scroll through some of these options. Normally I just hit sort of a random seed, but because I'm gonna need the resources to raise every critter and grow every plant, I wanna make sure we have plenty of vents and geysers. So at a minimum, I want Geoactive. Plus it gives me an opportunity for more content because we'll be taming more vents and geysers. After much rerolling, we went with an asteroid that has geodes, geoactive and alternate pod location. I almost kept rerolling because I despise boulders and it seemed like every time I had a geoactive it had large or medium boulders. But if I have to deal with them, at least having them on the other colony won't be quite as bad. We have all the story traits active, game settings are set to default, and away we go. Fingers crossed that this seed is actually viable and it looks like it is. Now, because I like to make things arbitrarily more difficult for myself, I'm going to set a rule that every single duplicate that comes out of the pod and that we start with has to be either a farmer or a rancher, which means just like it's evident with these three dupes, we're not going to start with a researcher or a digger. And the only way we'll be able to take one out of the pod in the future is if they have farming or ranching. I mean, it is a farm after all. And as the standard, the names for all our duplicates will be coming from our YouTube and Patreon members. Without further ado, let's get this party started. And of course, we go with the quick pause and the zoom back and see what we find in, uh-oh, a natural cast geyser erupting at 150 C, a mere, what, 20 tiles away? That's okay. It's going to be fine. At least we have some thick granite that'll protect us, but... This area is going to heat up a little bit. Lucky for us, it looks like it's in a small cavity and gas doesn't transfer thermals very well. So this natural gas geyser should stifle itself pretty quickly. It looks like we only have the one water pool a little further to the top, which means we're gonna have to do a lot of early digging just to get access to it. And oh no, it's protected by granite, which as you may remember, requires hard digging. So maybe we're going to have to drop that water after all, just to be able to get access to it. Some uranium ore in the bottom left. And other than that, nothing else out of the ordinary. There is some water down here by the uranium ore, but that is quite a long distance before we'd be able to tap into it. I do love all these early oxyferns conveniently planted. It would be great for some early carbon dioxide removal. So I may not dig lower than this area for a little bit. Well, let's get started. I don't like being boxed in like this, but it could always be worse. Now the question is, where can we drop this water? As I was saying, I don't want to interrupt these oxyferns because that's a great advantage. Even though oxyferns have been nerfed to the point of near uselessness, I think there's something we can still do here. Start by digging up here. If I break open this tile, and leave these tiles alone. Maybe I can drain that water into a pool somewhere right about here. All right, here's the initial plan. We're probably not gonna get bathrooms and cots done today, but we're gonna try to dig all of this out and then drop this tank right into here and this is where we'll put our pitcher pump. And just in case, I will put tiles over this dirt. Oh, and that's some juicy aluminum ore, so we'll also dig that up as well. More natural gas revealing itself on the left side, wrapped in some obsidian and a little bit of slime. This is definitely odd. Oh, that must be some sort of odd geode. We also got the alternate pod location, so who knows where we are on this planetoid. 
And so far, apparently we know about a natural gas geyser, a cool steam vent, a saltwater geyser, and an oil reservoir with 16 unknown geysers. Now, an important point about this, this doesn't mean there's only one natural gas geyser or one cool steam vent, which also means these 16 unknown geysers are 16 unique geysers. There could be 20 or 30 geysers on the planet to it itself, so I am really excited about that. We also are going to have some copper, ice, and slimy meteors. And a quick review of the biomes. We, of course, start in the forest. We have marsh, jungle, magma, oily, ocean, rust, space, radioactive, and a swampy biome. And less than a cycle into our game, and we already have a pip that's in trouble, because, of course, we built a tile on top of it. B3 pip, which brings me to another point. Hold on, Glenn, we do not want to dig that out yet which brings up the point of another caveat with this playthrough is that we're going to treat it like a farm while i'm not guaranteeing the complete protection of all critters we'll at least try to avoid some of the more critter cruelty sort of methods like the drowning aka evolution chamber which should be interesting because it'll give us a couple of opportunities to try out different methods of converting those critters into food. While I told you that all of our duplicates are coming from our YouTube and Patreon members, I completely forgot to introduce you to Sulphur, Glenn, and Jetpack Dullahan. Sorry about no cots tonight, uh, but you should have dug faster. Oh, please don't pee in our brand new water tank. I guess I could have put down an outhouse even though we don't have access to clean water yet. So we're going to put one in now, although I don't think we're going to make it because bladders are at 100%. Well, Sulphur got to use the bathroom. Unfortunately, Glenn and Dullahan just heard about the news of the new toilets. There's two down, and there is three. Look at us. No polluted water. With the tank finished, though, it is time to try to drop this without making too much of a mess. We'll be able to dig all of this out, giving us more access to aluminum ore. And there's the decent drop. I don't think I've ever had to drop water into a tank to get access to it in the first two cycles of a colony ever, so this is shaping up to be quite the interesting playthrough already. Just taking a look at the oxygen map, because as standard on this planetoid, there's no algae, which means we're going to have to get access to an electrolyzer pretty soon. Luckily, there's a lot of little pockets of oxygen here, but considering... We don't even have a researcher yet. Granted, we won't need a dedicated researcher until we need to use this supercomputer, but that time's gonna be coming awfully soon, especially if we wanna have any chance of being able to survive. I really do wish there was another opening method of creating oxygen. I don't know what that would be. Maybe some sort of plant that you had to feed dirt into. Or Clay could just, you know, unnerf the oxifern. That'd be nice too. As promised, we're gonna try not to dig down too early because I do like using these oxiferns to get rid of that early carbon dioxide, which means we are going to be digging up here. Now, don't worry too much about all of the naturally planted trees. I'm going to try to leave as much of our floors natural for as long as we can because I'd like the pips to make us a natural park if that's possible. A couple pieces of oxalite over here, but other than that, I don't see any other formations of oxalite. It looks like this biome does go up to the top right a little bit more before we'll meet the granite. And right on schedule, our printing pod is activated and we still don't have a research station yet. I'm working on it. No worries. Sorry, Stinky. You're only decent at agriculture, but you didn't decide to make it your primary job, so you stay as genetic ooze. We'll take the coal. I was in the process of moving these bathrooms. Unfortunately, Things are already looking a little tight, so we are going to start digging our way to some oxygen while we get that initial research in. And we also found a few more pieces of oxalite up here, so we'll make sure we tap into it. I'd love to be able to open up this polluted water so that we can breathe in the yummy oxygen, but we can't get through that granite quite yet. I am putting the sublimation station in temporarily, so any of the polluted dirt that we get out of the outhouse you know, we'll turn back into oxygen as well. On the research front, we normally grab planter boxes, we grab the jumbo battery, and then we head into advanced research. But in this case, I think we have to go directly towards electrolyzers. 
I don't love the fact that we're going to be on them so early because we're going to have hydrogen everywhere, but it's better than suffocating. And being on the electrolyzer so early is going to make our water very, very critical. And so far, we did find some more salt water up here, so we could tap into a desalinator, but I need to see some vents and geysers exposed. There is one over here, of course, locked behind obsidian and granite. We do have the water down here that's still in our starting biome, so we'll be grabbing that as well. The situation is not as dire as the oxygen overlay shows. I mean, there's 500 grams of oxygen in every tile, which means there's five seconds of oxygen in every single tile per dupe. Let's go ahead and open up this cavern. Don't love the fact that these oxyferns aren't going to be as useful as we were hoping. Actually, this will work out kind of well. The carbon dioxide will have to pass the oxyferns before it heads down into the carbon dioxide sink. I can get rid of this sublimation station because we wouldn't have that polluted dirt in time anyways. We have finished plumbing and we're heading into air systems now. We're also going around to all the, for instance, mealwood to make sure auto harvest is enabled. More calories equals better. And air systems is now complete. I've already put the two strand wire up. So I'll put the electrolyzer here. And now we also have to get started on the liquid pump. Tie it in with the plumbing and the power. And it looks like we're going to make it with plenty of time. See, I told you everything was going to be fine. We're getting close to our first skill point about. 500 experience but this is going to bring up another unique characteristic about this colony in the fact that most of the duplicates are going to have to do jobs other than the ones that they like such as farming and ranching now in this case sulfur here will be able to do farming and probably mechatronics engineering but i don't know how long we're going to be able to hold out without having hard digging so Either Dullahan or Glenn's going to have to step up and do some hard digging when the time comes. Unless we get a little fortuitous with our pod. Let's be honest though, this is Echo Ridge Gaming. Fortune does not favor us. With that research out of the way, I'm considering going straight into sanitation. Because that extra water could come in handy. Remember, each duplicate ends up producing extra water inside the lavatory. It requires 5 kilos per flush but we're left with 11.7 kilos of polluted water afterwards. But then again, I don't see an excess source of sand laying around either. And we have none. So the water sieve is out of the question. So I think we're going to hold off on the standard bathroom for now, because I have no way to clean that polluted water afterwards. So next up on research is probably going to be more of the standard fare. We'll go into power regulation and grab the jumbo battery, and then maybe up to start getting our planter boxes. The duplicates are taking their very sweet time getting this construction done. So we're gonna elevate it to a six because once again, oxygen's getting a little tight down here in the main living area. Here's our cycle six pod, fingers crossed. We have a rancher, but they only do ranching. Plus they're building impaired. We have 34,000 calories, so I don't think we have to take the nutrient bars. And I suppose more people on the farm is better than not. And we could take this Ari here and put them into cooking because they do have gourmet. Welcome to duplicate number four, Patrick Gordon. I'm considering turning off the sinks and just dealing with the food poisoning. Five kilos per use times four duplicates is 20 kilos per cycle. That's 20 kilos that could be going into our electrolyzer. I don't know quite yet. I'll leave that as an emergency. If water starts getting tighter, I may end up doing that, but we'll see. I have also made sure that we had this whole area available, so ideally the hydrogen will all climb up there. Although there will be places like this that it'll tend to stick until we can dig it out. While the duplicates enjoy a nice night's sleep, I'm going to go ahead and set up some additional schedules. Sorry duplicates, I know times are tough right now, but they will get better. Trust me, I'm a professional. But now that we have a little bit of time, I will clear this area out and we'll put down some cots. Because while duplicate safety is our number one priority here at Echo Ridge Gaming, duplicate comfort comes in a close second. Jumbo batteries are finished, so we can upgrade those smaller batteries. Let me now head into... I want to get the ration box. We have a hatch hanging around down here, who's probably gobbling up all of our hexalin fruit. Let me make sure I move that out of the way until we get the ration box. And there we go, we have a nice little barracks here. Still working on the bathroom, a little bit more digging. We're also gonna dig up in here. That way we can enable 
auto harvest on this mealwood right here. Our skill points have come in right around the time we printed Patrick Gordon, so now it's a decision of who's going into what. And I promise you, none of it's farming and ranching. So I think Sulphur's going into advanced research, congratulations. Patrick Gordon, you're a digger. Jetpack, you're going to be a digger as well. And Glenn, you can be our colony cook. Now we have our latrine bonus for the plus one to morale and the barracks bonus for plus one to morale, which is important because with the duplicates not working in areas that they have an interest in, every single point is going to matter. Especially considering right now they're eating meal lice and we're going to be able to upgrade them into pickled meal, but the quality is still grizzly, which equals a minus one to morale. I think our little carbon sink is going to be a perfect location for our newly researched ration box. And so while the food will not be refrigerated, it will at least be sterile. Next up, we're going to go to mess tables because of those morale concerns. So having a mess hall or a great hall would help us out a lot. Little areas like this are going to start causing a problem. Notice the hydrogen is sort of stuck and it's because of dirt piles like this. So we're going to go in there, give some duplicates the itchy eyes, but core this out a little bit so that the hydrogen has an easier way to flow up. Ideally, we'd fill this whole chamber with hydrogen and then we'd be able to pump it into a hydrogen generator. It's going to be a little while till we have that tech, but we're working on it over here. We're gonna put some nice mess tables. And as soon as we're done with our water cooler, we'll also put it in here, disabled of course, because water is at a premium. No, you're not drinking it, dupes. I think we'll also start harvesting some of this lumber. Being able to create ethanol or maybe even use some of the wood burners, while they're not the most efficient sources of power, they can be handy in the early game. So I finished this room up and I was really hoping that the trees would count as a decor item. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like they do because we're still sitting in a mess hall. But not to worry, we'll head down here to decor and grab the flower pot. Another pod coming and going because not a single one of these is a rancher or a farmer. Doing some early exploration, I found a geode filled with carbon dioxide, except it's filled with 588 kilos worth of carbon dioxide in every single tile. Breaking into this geode, would quickly destroy your entire colony via asphyxiation because the carbon dioxide would spread all the way through here very, very quickly. This one's going to be a fun nut to crack. With our flower pot in, we now have access to a great hall, which is amazing because now our duplicates are all sitting at 8 and 9 morale. I don't know why the arbitries don't count. Apparently, it has to be self-planted. But okay, I can run with it. I hope you've enjoyed this first farm episode which is gonna end up being a longer Let's Play series. In my experimentation with the Chaos Crew seed, i.e. the last Let's Play we did, I found that the drop-off in views was identical over the course of nine episodes as it was over the course of, say, 40 episodes because there was much more time in between episodes. So we're gonna go back to the standard format. So let me know what you're most looking forward to seeing in this series in the comments below. Until next time, much love, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.